sex is simply not for me. A virgin at age 33. As a single person, part of that is abstinence because of what I believe sex is. See what author Arlene Spensley and Hollywood celebrities like Justin Bieber and Lolo Jones say about sex. Plus, a couple separated for two years has a change of heart. I've got to do the right thing, if for nobody else, my daughters. Hear what saved their marriage. I'll give up everything. I just want to be your wife. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Justin Bieber is in the headlines again, and this time it's for choosing celibacy to fight what he says was a legitimate problem with sex. Well, Justin shared in a recent Vogue interview alongside of his new wife, Haley Baldwin, that he chose to go a year without sex to rededicate his body to God and to heal from past hurts, saying, quote, he doesn't ask us not to have sex for him because he wants rules and stuff. He's like, I'm trying to protect you from hurt and pain. Sometimes people have sex because they don't feel good enough because they lack self-worth. Women do that and guys do that. I wanted to rededicate myself to God in that way because I really felt it was better for the condition of my soul. And I believe that God blessed me with Haley as a result. There are perks. <laughs> <laughs> there are perks. When you do it God's way, yes, there are lots, lots and lots of perks. It doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. seem like it at the time, but over the lifetime you figure it out and you figure out what he's trying to do is keep you from pain and hurt. Mm -hmm. Well, Olympic athlete and now reality star Lolo Jones recently shared on Big Brother season two that she is still a virgin. Aside from her joking on social media, as you can see here in her Twitter bio saying, holding out till 41 because there needs to be a movie sequel to the 40 year old virgin, praise Jesus. The 36 year old Christian athlete has made it clear that she's serious about maintaining her virginity until marriage, saying it's just something, a gift that I wanna give to my husband. But please understand this journey has been hard. If there's virgins out there, I'm going to let them know it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Harder than training for the Olympics, harder than graduating from college, has been to stay a virgin before marriage. Oh, you go, Lolo. That's a wonderful thing and a wonderful stance to take in today's culture. Uh, I don't know what it is about our culture, but we seem to laugh at people that say that they're virgins. And well, instead of honoring them and saying, you know, good for you, you're holding out for that treasure. I think most people, generically speaking, are not holding out for that treasure. So we mock others, I think, to make ourselves feel, feel okay better. about the choice we've made. Yeah, but go low, low. Yeah. <laughs> way, way, to, way to be there. Well, in 2012, journalist Arlene Spensley outed herself as a 26-year-old virgin in a Tampa Bay P Times piece that went viral worldwide. And she recently sat down with Ashley Key to explain why she thinks chastity is for lovers. So Arlene Spensley, thank you so much for being here with us and, and really being a part of our campaign called Unhooked Holy in a Hookup World. So you decided to go public with your choice to stay uh, abstinent? Yeah, you so, could say that. Okay, so tell me about that. So, yeah, when I was 23, uh, I had just started working for the Tampa Bay Times, which is Florida's largest newspaper. And pretty early on in, in that time of my life, I had started dating a guy who did not define sex the same way I do. He was not a Christian like I am. And back then I had a different set of standards. I didn't really think much about whether I should share values with the guy I date. I just thought, hey, he's cute. Let's see if it will work, you know? And the further we got into our relationship, the clearer it became to me that he was not okay with saving sex for marriage. And that had been my plan. So I ended up ending this relationship. And afterward, I realized that if this one random guy that I happen to date doesn't understand why I'm saving sex, then probably a bunch of other people on this planet don't understand that decision either. And so I decided, you know what? I work for the largest newspaper in the state. I'm gonna take advantage of that and tell people what this is all about. And wow. so I wrote this essay, Why I'm Still a Virgin at Age 23. The feedback that I got was nothing that I even ever anticipated. But as it turned out, people really needed to talk about the virtue of chastity. So if chastity is a virtue, then it's a decision you make every day over and over to do the right thing regarding sex. Because all of us, single or married, are called to do the right thing regarding sex. And as a single person, part of that is abstinence because of what I believe sex is. Sex is a sacred physical sign of the vows that a husband and wife took on the altar where they were married. It's the expression of the unity that is actually achieved by matrimony. 
And so if I'm not married, then sex is simply not for me. So how do you think someone who maybe has had a past that isn't pure, how can they start being abstinent and really unhooking themselves from the hookup world? Yeah, so that's the beauty of the virtue of chastity. You can start today. It's not necessary to have always been chaste in the past. You can start practicing that virtue now. And there are some different things that I would recommend to people who are new to this way of life. And you know, one of them is to surround yourself with a community of people who can support you in this. Do not vent about it to friends who don't practice it. You want instead to vent about it to friends who are better at it than you are, because they're going to be able to help you to get through what you're going through when it's difficult. You know, sometimes you see a person you're interested in and you don't know anything about them and you begin to pursue this relationship and very quickly it becomes clear to you, this person doesn't love Jesus the way I do. This person doesn't have the same values that I do. The problem is we haven't thought critically because we're entering these relationships without ever asking important questions like, does this relationship help or hurt my relationship with Christ? Uh, does this relationship make meeting my goals easier as a Christian or does it make meeting my goals more difficult? And if we start to think critically and ask those questions, we start to discern more clearly whether we should or shouldn't enter certain relationships. So does practicing chastity make dating more difficult? Yeah. <laughs> How does it make it more difficult? And if it does make dating more difficult, where is the hope? It makes the pool of people you can pick from much, much smaller. And so sometimes it takes a lot longer to meet someone who meets your standards. And that, I think, is where a lot of people start to lose hope. People start to think, I'm never going to meet somebody who believes what I do, who loves Jesus like I do, who can live the kind of life I would want to live with them. And so they begin to lower their standards and they begin to settle for relationships that are not as healthy or as holy as God would want for them. And so, yes, like sexual desire will arise in us and it's important to listen to it and to say, hey, like I find myself attracted to this person. Is this something I should act on? Could this be the person that God wants me to marry in the end? Uh, but sometimes in our culture, and by sometimes I mean 98.9% of the time, people misuse sexual desire. They don't see it as a reason to turn toward somebody else and will their good. They see it as a, an opportunity to will their own good by using somebody else to satisfy those desires. Um, but you know, there is hope and through the grace of God, it is possible to practice chastity and I'm living proof of that. Well, Arlene, thank you. Seriously, thank you so much for just um, allowing me to talk to you. I know um, your words of advice are going to touch a lot of people. So thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. A lot of wisdom in what Arlene shared. If you're single and you want to break free from the hookup culture, I want to encourage you to go to cbn.com slash unhooked and sign up for a free devotional, free in this 40-day devotional, you're going to find answers to sex, dating, and more with exclusive content from our relationship experts. You can also get it by calling 1-800-700-7000. Just ask for our free Unhooked devotional. Gordon? Well, still ahead, a husband gives his cheating wife an ultimatum. I basically told her, I love you. I want our marriage to work more than anything else in this world but this relationship with him is over and don't ever speak to him again. Watch what happens when she refuses to give up the other man right after this. Yesterday on Valentine's Day, Casey and Lindsey Voss celebrated their 14th wedding anniversary. But at one time, Lindsey walked away from their relationship and into the arms of another man. She was gone for two years and filed for divorce. But during that time, Casey never lost hope that one day their relationship would be restored. The Doss's love story began in youth ministry. Casey was a young preacher and Lindsay was a gifted dancer in a well-known teen worship and performing arts group. What I love the most about Lindsay was she was fun loving, she was spontaneous, um, she was easy going. And Casey, was an incredibly godly man. I thought, oh my goodness, this guy is way out of my league. They fell in love and married on Valentine's Day in 2005. Casey was 22 and Lindsay 18. A few years later, Lindsay gave birth to two girls and the couple continued to work side by side in ministry. But underneath it all, Lindsay struggled with feeling accepted growing up. 
Stemming from a strained relationship with her father, Lindsay's suppressed feelings began to surface three years into her marriage as she became consumed with her identity as a dancer and her priorities shifted. I was pouring all of my time into dancing. All of my closest friends were much younger than me. They were just in a different phase of life. You know, I was a wife and a mother, and whenever they, you know, went out to a movie, I wanted to go out with them. And I was gonna leave the kids with, you know, Casey, and me go out and kind of live my life and be free. Lindsay found the extra attention she was looking for in a coworker, which slowly developed into an emotional affair. When the affair was uncovered, Casey gave his wife an ultimatum. I basically told her, I love you. I want our marriage to work more than anything else in this world. But this relationship with him is over and don't ever speak to him again. And she said, no, that's not, it's not gonna happen. For me to stay with Casey means I have to give up this. I don't, I don't want that. And so I left. Lindsay moved out and filed for divorce. Although the relationship with her coworker didn't last, she began dating other men. Meanwhile, Casey hadn't given up on their marriage. But I've got to do the right thing. If for nobody else, my daughters, I want to be able to look at them and say, I did everything I knew to do. I did everything all of these leaders in my life told me to do, and I did. They would tell me, reach out to her, send her this, call her, do, and I did everything they asked me to do. But I never questioned God because I knew God was pursuing and speaking and dealing with her in His way, and then at the end, it'd be her decision. The couple had been separated for two years, and the divorce papers were prepared to be signed when Lindsay began to have a change of heart. And I thought this would be freedom, and I'm not happy. Now, you know, whenever I would, I don't remember, I looked at pictures of Casey on social media, and I would see him with the kids and see him, you know, smiling, thinking, God, I, I miss that. You know, I, I miss him. One morning, she opened her Bible to the story of the prodigal son and allowed God to speak to her heart. It said, and he came to himself. God reminded him who he was. He reminded him of, of who he was supposed to be. And he said, I will go to my father's house and say, Father, I have sinned against you. You know, can I serve, you know, as a servant in your home? And I remember thinking that, I remember thinking, I would rather be Casey's maid than to live the way I'm living right now. I wanted to be right. I wanted my marriage. I wanted my family. I wanted my husband. In January 2016, Lindsay reached out to Casey and they arranged a meeting to talk. The only thing that gave me hope was when she walked in. I'd never seen that deep of a repentance. I just want you. I just want to be your wife. I want to be our kid's mother. That's all I want. I'll give up everything. And I said, but I I'm sorry. And then he said to me, I, I don't want you to leave. I want you to stay. And that was it. I should be the one hugging you and kissing you. I should, I should be the one trying to make you feel better. And here you are doing it to me. Why? And knowing, you know, the depth of forgiveness and the depth of love he had for me, I've never seen a more beautiful picture of the love of God, the forgiveness of God. Over the next few months, the couple began to heal. They went to counseling and agreed on new boundaries to protect their relationship. Today, their marriage is completely restored. They even have a new addition to their family. Our marriage now, I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. She's my best friend. We have a new son. Uh, the, the healing it's brought to our children, the, the, just the, the unity, the oneness in our home. You know, I mean, everything now from the sound of his Pepsi can opening at the house, that's the most beautiful sound in the world. You know, of hearing him walk through the living room in the morning, it's the most beautiful sound. There's nothing like it. The couple lives in Knoxville, Tennessee, where they have planted a church called Hope Unlimited. Lindsay shares a detailed account of their story in her book called The Way Home. Now, when the Dawsons celebrate their anniversary on Valentine's Day, they are reminded of love that forgives and restores. Only God did it. And uh, Valentine's Day is where I celebrate His faithfulness. I look at my family and I think, I don't need anything else in the world. Now it's, it's so far beyond, you know, just an anniversary. It's the celebration of life in the same way that it's a celebration of love. And it's a celebration of, of God holding true to His Word. It's, it's that He is a merciful and forgiving God, that He is willing to take something broken and make it whole. 
and He'll do that for you. He'll take whatever you've broken, whatever you've done with your life, and He'll make it whole. And He'll make you what He intended you to be from the beginning. The Bible says that before He even laid the foundation of the earth, He created good things for you to walk into. That means He was thinking about you and your life before he ever uttered the words, let there be light, he was thinking about you. Now, Lindsay says something absolutely amazing. Here she's, she's trying to reunite. She's trying to come back, and, and she says, I'll give up everything, everything, in order to be the wife, the mother that I'm supposed to be. I, I see that as, as my destiny, what, what I'm supposed to do. The reality is you're not giving up anything. What you are is becoming what God intended. The prodigal son, it, the verse is striking. He came to himself. He came to understand who he really was. And in that understanding, all the other things broke away. Here he is. He's taken in his inheritance. He's taken what should have been a posterity, not just for him, but for his children's children. And he's wasted it on riotous living. And he's come to the end of everything. Uh, he's indentured himself as a servant to someone else. He's feeding pigs, and in feeding pigs, he's looking at what the pigs are eating, and he's getting hungry. And that's what it takes to come to yourself, to say, this isn't me. This isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. It would be better for me to be a servant in my father's house. Well, here's the great news. In all of that, the father, who's absolutely a symbol for God the Father, was looking for him. So when he turned and when he came home, the father ran to him, put his arms around him, embraced him, kissed him, put a ring on his finger, and said, let's have a great party. That is what God will do for you. What does it take to get it? It just takes that initial turn to say, this isn't who I am. This isn't what I want to be. This isn't the life that, that I want to lead. I want to live for him. And it seems at the time that you're giving up everything. No, you're not giving up a thing. What you're doing is getting everything getting what you were originally intended to do, to be. And in that, you'll find that your heart's desires are satisfied. You can live a life of joy if you let God in and let him take control. If this is for you, just bow your head with me. It's a very simple prayer. Just show God, I turn. I want to have a life with you. I'm tired of it on my terms. I want to live on your terms. When you do it, you'll find righteousness, peace, and joy. Pray with me. Jesus. That's right. Say his name. Say it out loud. Jesus. I'm tired of the life that I'm living. I'm sorry for the decisions I've made. I've, I'm sorry for walking away from you. Jesus, I turn today and I turn to you. And I want to give up all the things that I've done. I want to live for you and have you be the central purpose of my life. So Jesus, forgive me for the things that I've, I've done. Forgive me. Set me free from them. I turn to you and I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer, for I pray it in Jesus' name. Father, for those who just prayed, I ask for a baptism in your love. I ask that you would run to them, put your arms around them, let them know that their prayer has been heard and has been answered today. Do it, Lord, for I ask it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to let somebody know. 
The Bible says that if we will confess with our mouth that Jesus is saved, we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So call us, 1-800-700-7000. When you call, I've got a free packet for you. It's called A New Day. It's what do you do now? How do you live the Christian life? It's all free, so call for it. 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Well, up next, find the fountain of youth. Dr. Josh Axe talks about the amazing health benefits of collagen and the keto diet. He's here next when we come back. Dr. Josh Axe is a man on a mission to help people lose weight, balance hormones, and reverse disease. And he believes collagen may hold the secret to it all. Take a look. Collagen, the most abundant protein in our bodies, makes our skin firm. Collagen is also the glue that helps hold the body together and protects our digestive tract. As we age, however, our bodies produce less collagen, which can lead to wrinkled skin, joint problems, a leaky gut, and more. We deplete collagen even more with a high sugar diet, smoking, and too much sun. Dr. Josh Axe, who founded one of the world's most popular natural health websites, says the good news is we can put back the collagen by consuming bone broth, other healthy foods, and supplements. Well, joining me now is Dr. Josh Axe, and thanks for being here. Good to have you back. Hey, thanks for having me, Carrie. Talk a little bit about this significance of collagen and, and how good it is. I mean, I, I guess I knew it was in our bodies, but I didn't realize we could help it along, kind of enhance it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, collagen is critical for us to get this in our diet. You know, 90% um, of our skin, hair, nails, bones, and our gut lining is made up of collagen and our joints. And so, and once we get to the age of 25, our bodies produce less and less collagen every year. And that's what makes our skin sag. It's what causes us to get creases in our forehead, our joints to ache. And most people get almost zero collagen in their diet every day when in fact, it might be the most important supplement or if we're consuming it as bone broth, the food that we're missing in our diet today. Yeah, I had heard that bone broth was good. I've used it recently and it's, you know, drinking it, it actually tastes good. Yeah. But I didn't realize that it was a great source of the collagen you're talking about. It is the number one source that our, all of our ancestors consume is bone broth. So making it at home or taking it as a supplement, both are great to do. You know, today there are products like multi-collagen protein and bone broth protein you can pick up at your local health food store or online where you can just simply add it to a smoothie. So it's a powder. So it's a powder, yeah. Simply take it and you always want to look for multi-collagen protein because we want multiple types of collagen just like we want a multivitamin. But collagen can be a game changer. I mean I've seen people, including my own family members, who have said they noticed their hair got thicker, their skin wow. got tighter and more firmed. So for anti-aging it's like the ultimate supplement. So is that the best way to add it to our diet? I know I've heard, you know, we should all drink at least one glass of, of the bone broth a day, but with the powder into our food? Yeah, so the powder, if you get the right powder, which again is something like a bone broth protein powder or multi-collagen powder, um, they're essentially bone broth, but in powder form, they're just dehydrated. Okay. So you're getting essentially the same thing in an easy, convenient form. I wanna talk about your book. I, first of all, let me just show you all that. I think the cover's so pretty. It's called The Keto Diet. Boy, this is kinda like the hot diet these days. And your book is really talking about a 30-day plan to kind of kickstart your body into the right mode, not just to lose weight, but to function well. Yeah, you're right. You know, and here's the big thing I cover in the book. There's a right way, but a wrong way to do keto. There's a lot of people today that are eating all conventional meat and dairy products mm -hmm. on keto, and they might lose weight, but they're not healing on the inside. When people follow the keto diet the way that I lay out, where it's high in healthy fats some vegetables, mm -hmm. it's really, really healthy and healing. I've seen people overcome issues. You know, really, it's created to fight things like autoimmune disease, help heal heal our brains and nervous systems. In wow. fact, I discovered this diet when my mom was battling cancer. We used this diet to help her beat cancer naturally. So in the book, I have a keto cancer plan, a keto collagen plan, and different plans to help people um, you know, lose weight, but overall help their body heal um, all, all in this book. Lose weight and, and then you keep it off by 
staying healthy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Creating a rhythm in all of this. Uh, talk about, you have five options in the book. How does one know as they read the book and look at this, what's the right one for me? Yeah, well, I have a quiz in the book, essentially a keto quiz that people can take and determine which type of keto diet's right for them. And then, all, you know, all the recipes in the book are uh, people love. In fact, we've got recipes in the book for keto pancakes, keto chocolate chip cookies, keto fudge and brownies. What's not to but, like, right? Yes, yeah, so, but we're using all natural ingredients uh -huh. like almond flour, coconut flour, pastured eggs, grass-fed butter. That uh, Actually, and the great thing is today, people can get all these things even at their local grocery store. And we have the 30-day plan and the shopping list all in the book. So there's really no confusion. You know, one of the things you say is the keto diet is not about being hungry or starving yourself in any way. It's about eating lots of good food, really. Yeah, one of the things people will notice when they follow the keto diet the way I lay out in the book is they'll stay full. They'll actually get rid of those food cravings because they're getting plenty of fat, fiber, and healthy protein, and a lot of nutrient-dense foods. Well, it's a book that you really ought to get a hold of because it's got something in it for everybody. Keto Diet, it's available wherever books are sold. Thank you for being with us. Hey, again. thanks for having Great me, Terry. Great to have you here. Well, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. There's an admonition for all of us, right? Thanks for being with us. Have a great day. We'll see you again tomorrow on 700 Club Interactive. God bless you.